So what we're going to do is, and, and this is interesting, we're going to take these custom-made cracker textures and we're going to put them onto a wall of a house. We're going to make a house made out of crackers, okay? And uh, we're going to do something a little special here with this. Now, if you take a look at what she's done, we're just going to use this one wall right here, okay? Um, we're just going to use this one side wall as our example. I'm not going to obviously do all of them. So... <clears throat> If I go back to my default view, I'm going to create, I've got my material, I've got my texture created, um, and here I'm going to select image, and then, uh, oh, let me just delete this for a second, create a new one. And we can close this, and then down here I'm going to click open, and we're going to use, wow, it's taking a while. Um, we're going to use the first cracker front. And I'll show you why this isn't going to work as perfectly as we might want it to. So I'm going to open the image. It's a big image, by the way. Now we're going to go back to UV editing. And I'm going to add my cracker. So it, it is really big. So now, um, whoops, I'm forgetting my commands in Blender. So if I take this, and uh, I scale this up. Let's go to our uh, rendered mode. Oops, we need, we need our UV lighting. Okay, so let's go back to, uh, whoops, let's go back to solid. So let me, uh, let me pump up our, in, our uh, indirect lighting here. So I'm gonna take our environmental lighting. I'm gonna set it to 0.60 or 0.5 approximately. The reason why it was looking the way it is is because she's got a light source, but it's actually inside the house. Okay, so now we'll go back to our UV editing, and, uh, and here we go. So now I can set this to rendered mode, and you can see how it's got the cracker on there. Now, if I want the cracker to be pretty much all the way across, well, actually, um, before we get there, I forgot something else. One of the things that happens is when you reset the, um, or I'm going to reset the UV unwrap. When you... Um, UV unwrap the object. We did our seaming and everything. One of the problems was that even these side walls are the same size here as the big pieces. So one of the things that you can do is go in and let's actually, let's, uh, let me go back to default and I'm going to turn off all my other uh, things. So boom, boom, boom. Actually, we can keep the floor. There we go. That's going to help me a little bit. So this will this will help me uh, do this. I'm going to get out of this. Right click. Uh, no. Oh yeah, there it is. Thank you. All right. So now I've got this all set up. So um, if I go back to my UV editing, one of the things that I can do is go back into edit mode. And if I just take face select mode here and I just right click on one, it'll show me which one is that square right over here. So I can click on this one, it shows me that one, and it's pretty much what you would expect. So then I hit select all, and so what I can do is I can, I can you know, check which ones are which. So this one and that one. So this one's too big, that one's too big, that one's too big, that one over there is too big, okay? And then the bottom one is the top one. So nothing that I wasn't expecting. So what I can do now is go over here, um, hit the A key to deselect it, then grab and shift right click on the two points, zoom in and hit the G key for grab, and I'm gonna move them up just a little bit like that. Right click, shift, right click, G key to grab, and I'm going to get this set up so that they're approximately proportional to what I, I need them to be. Now these first ones are really easy. There we go. However, with this one, in order to select it, if I'm not smart and I just grab these two and I grab, you see I'm stretching the other wall. So I actually need to grab all four of these, hit the G key, grab it, and then reposition it here. left click. Now I've got a proportional UV unwrap that's going to make a lot more sense. So I can come on in here and I can go to rendered 
and you can start seeing what it's going to look like. Now, obviously, it's, the texture is way too big. So we'll select all, scale up, G to grab and reposition. And now it's looking pretty good, except for the fact that you can see we're, we're running into some problems here because we have an uneven texture. Now, there's two ways to solve this. One that I'm not going to do, but I'll just tell you, and then the one that I'm going to do. One way to solve this is to zoom in and crop out the little bumpy parts on my JPEG or on my PNG. Just get rid of them, okay? However, there's something else that I may want with this wall that's going to kind of relegate that unnecessary. And that is, if you noticed, I have a whole bunch of textures. I have a front and a back because saltine crackers are different on the back. See, so I've got a back shot too. She wants a different texture on each side. Well, that becomes a little bit of a different proposition because now what we have is trying to put two different textures onto the same UV map. I've tried a bunch of things. I've tried doing layers, because in Blender you can actually add a second UV map and a layer. Doesn't seem to come into Unity correct. So we need to make these two same textures in the same UV map. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of Photoshop here. So, and it's not that hard actually, it's copy and paste. But before we do that, we need to prep our uh, UV map so that we kind of have a good sense of what we're doing. So right under here, down in the bottom menu, there's a UV menu. Click on it and you can export your UV layout. This is awesome. So we're going to, oops, missed it. So we're going to export our UV layout and it's going to ask me in just a second where to save it. I'm just going to save it right here and I'm just going to call this wall UV layout.png and I'm just going to export it. Okay, there we go. Done and done. And uh, what it's going to do is it's actually going to save my UV mapping, not the texture, but my UV mapping as an image file. So now what I can do, is we, we can uh, minimize this for a second. I'm going to take my UV layout, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go open with Photoshop right now because it's not set as the default for this. And you can see, uh-oh. Okay, so I made a simple mistake here. When I scaled up the UV layout, okay, it only exports the square of the UV uh, image that we saw. So let's do that again. That's an interesting thing. I just learned that. Okay, so let's go back to Blender here. So what I need to do is I need to scale this down so it fits in my uh, image. That way it will actually, it needs to fit inside the grid. So I can get rid of the image. Okay, it needs to fit inside this grid. So scale it up. There we go. Now let's export it again. Export UV layout. Now I'm just going to save it right over top of the old one. Now let's go back to Photoshop. File open. Um, oh, no, it's going to go back to my website thing that I was doing with my other kids. So here we go. Ro uh, right click, open with Photoshop. There we go. So now you can see my UV layout and you can see the lines, okay, of the actual image. Now, right now, this is pretty low resolution. If I go to image, image size, and I check it out in pixels, it's only 1024. We want this to be a lot higher res for something like this because we're going to get pretty close to it in the game. So I'm going to set it for um, four times that amount, which is 4096. And we can always res it down if we need to, okay? So we can always make it less resolution, so it's better to start with higher resolution. And then if you get a bunch of game lag when you get into the building, then you know you need to take your textures down. And that's easy to do. So 4096, 72 pixels per inch, click OK. Now the image is going to get a lot bigger here. We're going to go down, but we still have our outlines. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to uh, the Ex Explorer, and I'm going to take my Cracker Front, and I'm going to open that in Photoshop as well. Boom. So there we go. I'm just going to go to Select All, Edit, Copy. Now I can close it, Edit, Paste. 
And there's the cracker is going to come in here. I could take the move tool and I can move it over here and get it set up the way that I want to. Then I'm going to go and probably you're starting to see where I'm heading with this. Set my cracker, right click, open the back image. Same thing, select all, edit, copy, close it, edit, paste. Now at this moment, I've got these two here. Now Photoshop, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, works on layers. So over here when I pasted it in, it created a new layer for the front view and it created a, a second layer for the back view. This original layer is actually my outline. So if I click the eyeballs, you can turn them off and you can see the outlines. So I'm actually going to bring this up above by dragging the layer up until it's above the others. Now I can see exactly where the walls are going to be and how the sizes are going to work for this. And then we'll turn this off when we're done. Right now I'm also going to hit save. So I'm going to go save and it's going to ask me what to save. I'm going to save it as a Photoshop document so that I can continue to work on it later. So click save, click OK when it says maximize compatibility. Now I can start to really work on this. So <clears throat> What I'm going to do to kind of make this work, there's a lot of techniques with UV mapping when you start making your own maps like this. This is simple. We're going to try and keep it simple. I'm going to edit transform scale and I'm going to scale this down a little bit here so that it matches up with my walls a little bit better until it hits that. There we go. So, you know, just trying to figure it out. Oop, turn snapping off so that I just want to get the best general size that I can and you'll notice I'm trying to crop out the little bumpies that are on here, okay? There we go. Now for the back, I'm going to do the same thing, but here I need to be strategic. So now I like this, so I'm going to hit the check, the check mark. Okay, now the check mark says I'm done. For the back image, now I'm going to scale it down as well, but the truth of the matter is that it's a lot bigger than the front, so we've got a little bit more work to do. Plus, we don't want it to go around the front either. So I'm going to hit the scale, and uh, we'll go shift key, by the way. You want to always hold the shift key when you're scaling stuff so you don't do this. Okay, you want to keep it as square as much as possible, and it's okay if it goes off the page. So there we go. That, that's looking pretty darn good as far as our textures are concerned. We have a slight overlap right here where the two are meeting. And now it becomes a real important part. Is that a problem or not? In this case, that's going to be the bottom, which is going to be sunk into the floor. We're never going to see that. So it probably isn't. So it's probably not that big of a deal, right? So now we can take this, save it again. I'm going to turn off my layer that's over top of it. And now I'm going to go File, Save As. And I'm going to call it UV Layout Finished, or actually, you know what? It's probably better, Textured, Textured, OK? And I'm going to save it as a PNG. And the reason why I save it as a PNG is because PNGs preserve the transparency. If you save it as a JPEG, it'll make this white. We don't want that. We want to preserve the transparency if we can. It might not matter if it made it white. It depends on your model, so I prefer PNGs. Okay, so there we go. Save. Um, no compression, no interlacing for now. We can always resave it if we decide we need compression. Click OK. Now this is what's really cool. Because we figured out our layout, I can close this now. No, I don't want to save it. Let's get out of Photoshop. Go back into Blender. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into my default view here. Go back here. Whoops. Oh, it just took a while. I'm going to delete my first texture and add a new one and open, click the open button, and now I'm going to see my texture version here. So I'm going to open that image, and what's really cool is it's going to line up with the unwrap that we've already done. So this is kind of a backwards way of doing unwrapping. You used to add the texture first, then unwrap. Now we're going to unwrap first. We export that unwrap as a series of lines, and now we can bring in our texture. So let's bring it in, UV wall layout, 
See how it resizes it automatically for us, which is really cool. And then if we go over here and we take a look at this, whoops, I don't want to do that. You can see how the inside wall is a different texture than the outside wall. Now you can see also where the bumpies kind of match up here, but again, that's going to be in the ceiling, so it doesn't matter. So when you walk into the wall, it's going to look like the inside of your cracker, and on the outside, it's going to look like a saltine cracker that way. Pretty cool. Now there's a couple of mistakes I made, which you might see right here. What's one thing that somebody sees right now? Yeah. Uh, you had the, the texture for each wall square instead of more rectangular. Correct. So the texture, when I did my UV mapping, I made a little minor mistake. I should have stretched these this way. All, all, so what I, what I should have done is just taken these here, like this, and I should have guesstimated by hitting G to grab a more rectangular mode of, of, uh, of, the, of the map. And, I, and, and so what happens is I can do this. And it, right now it's looking a little funky on the edges, but now it looks a lot better. Um, but yeah, so now I'd have to go resize and resave everything out. But yeah, that was definitely one problem, is I let my, my, uh, my UV map stay rect or square when the wall was actually rectangular. And that's just the thing Blender does. If you scale up a cube, when you unwrap it, the unwrap is still square even if the cube is rectangular. So that's, that's something I wish that Blender did a little bit better, like it should read the scale and then do the UV map in scale, but it doesn't, okay? So that's, that's the big mistake that I made right there. But hopefully you can see how this works. When we start working with more complicated objects, such as health packs, uh, stim packs, or even on into projectiles, weapons, or once we get to the enemy that we're going to be chasing and or that's chasing us, you can imagine some of the possibilities of you being able to texture individual objects and being very specific as to, you can literally find like, uh, like let's say uh, like a policeman's badge or something like that, you can paste that onto your UV texture. If you've got your mapping done right, you can make very specific and very awesome UV maps for very complicated objects. The rounder the object, the more complicated it gets. So this is about as simple as it gets. But as we start getting more complicated objects, especially if they're round and cylindrical or they've got like, you know, like a person shape, it gets really complicated. But this is a good starter. Does this make sense to everybody, what I did and how I did it? Now you drop this into uh, Unity and it would work. The other thing that you could do is create a, a normals map or a bump map with SS bump to create texture on the walls. And that would be another thing that you might want to think about doing or trying. Okay? So, but we'll just, we'll just leave it at that and I'll let you guys get to work. Okay? All right.